I'll be back. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for those lines of dialogue that instantly evoke the film they come from. We're going to need a bigger boat. Beware of spoilers ahead. Number 30, Houston, we have a problem, Apollo 13. NASA buffs will recognize that neither Jack Swigert nor Jim Lovell said Houston, we have a problem, and instead contacted Mission Control to say Houston, we've had a problem. But regardless of the minor misquote, movie lovers everywhere know that when they hear the former line, we're talking about 1995's space docudrama Apollo 13. The flick was based on the true story of the 1970 Apollo 13 lunar mission, which never landed on the moon due to the aforementioned problem. It stars Tom Hanks as Commander Jim Lovell, who spoke the line that's now become a pop culture staple. Uh, this is Houston. Uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. Number 29. I feel the need, the need for speed, Top Gun. In the mid-90s, gamer kids might have said, I feel the need, the need for speed in reference to a desire to play their favorite racing game. However, roughly a decade earlier, that statement had been made famous by none other than Maverick himself, Tom Cruise. I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! It's hard to hear the words without instantly picturing the scene they originated in, which tells you everything you need to know about its impact. Now that the 2022 sequel has brought the franchise to the front of our minds once more, we're sure a whole new generation of moviegoers will be expressing their need for speed. Number 28. This is Sparta. 300. The line, followed by the slow-mo kick, is undeniably 300. This is Sparta! But had things gone a bit differently, This Is Sparta might not be as instantly recognizable and synonymous with its film as it is. As Gerard Butler explained to GQ magazine, he'd done many takes, usually reciting the line in a more subdued way. But then he asked director Zack Snyder if he could try it one more time, at which point he gave the reading we know and love. Sure, it was over the top. He knew it and those on set seemingly knew it. But as Snyder said, quote, it was awesome. We have to say we agree. Number 27. If you build it, he will come. Field of Dreams. There are a lot of movies where people build things, but only one we can think of where that thing is a baseball field in a cornfield. Why does Kevin Costner's character Ray Kinsella build said baseball field, you ask? Because a disembodied voice tells him, If you build it, he will come. Is the he shoeless Joe Jackson or Kinsella's deceased father? That is for the viewer to decide and experience. But for cinephiles and baseball lovers everywhere, the words, if you build it, he will come, will always evoke Field of Dreams. If you build it, he will come. While we're on the subject of baseball movies, let's not forget about a League of Their Own's iconic line. Because there's no crying in baseball. There's no crying in baseball! Number 26. Nobody puts baby in a corner. Dirty Dancing. Everyone remembers that final dance number in Dirty Dancing, where Johnny and Baby wow the Kellerman's crowd with his kind of dancing. But prior to hitting the stage, Patrick Swayze's Johnny Castle grabs Baby from her table after uttering a now iconic statement at her dad. Nobody puts Baby in a corner. Years later, Swayze reportedly admitted that he initially, quote, hated the line, finding it, quote, corny and hesitant to speak the scripted words. However, the final product changed his mind, as he saw how effective it is. It's taught me about the kind of person I want to be. Sit down, Jake. Indeed. It works so well that hearing it immediately brings the movie to mind and gets us ready to bust out our dancing shoes. Number 25. Get Busy Livin' or Get Busy Dyin' – The Shawshank Redemption Given its popularity today, you might be surprised to learn that The Shawshank Redemption didn't do well at the box office back in 1994. But instead of just going away and dying, the film built on its critical accolades and popularity among viewers, eventually becoming a beloved classic. Many images are synonymous with it today, but there's one piece of dialogue in particular that always instantly transports us into the world of the film. Get busy living, you get busy dying. First spoken by Tim Robbins' Andy Dufresne to Morgan Freeman's Red, it encompasses the story's theme of strength in the face of apparent hopelessness to gorgeous effect. It's no wonder it's had such a lasting impact. Number 24. Are you not entertained? Gladiator. After being told that being a gladiator in the arena is also being an entertainer, Maximus heads out onto the battlefield and quite easily defeats all the foes put in front of him. 
When the crowd's reaction is initially less than enthusiastic, he angrily asks them one of the most famous questions cinema has ever heard. Are you not entertained? Now, we know movie history is littered with stories about showmen, but some find a way to stand out from the crowd. Indeed, when we hear those four words, or see them written in any number of online memes, we know they're from Gladiator. Number 23. It was Beauty Killed the Beast – King Kong There are actually two right answers for this one, and no, neither of them is Beauty and the Beast. Although the quote does line up with the aforementioned Disney film, we know Beauty actually saved the beast there. Rather, this famous quote is referring to another beast entirely – the one known as, say it with us, King Kong. It was Beauty Killed the Beast. In fact, it's so iconically associated with the creature that it's been used as the final line of dialogue in both its eponymous 1933 movie as well as Peter Jackson's 2005 retelling of the tale. It was Beauty Killed the Beast. Number 22. Open the Pod Bay Doors, Hal. 2001 – A Space Odyssey Much of 2001 – A Space Odyssey happens in silence, with director Stanley Kubrick even reportedly calling it a, quote, non-verbal experience. Though there are few words spoken throughout the two-plus-hour-long runtime, there are a number of them that have become immediately recognizable. Of course, we're thinking of six in particular. Open the Pod Bay Doors, Hal. They not only mark a pivotal point in the story, they also continue to resonate today as the use of AI continues to increase. Let's just hope that Alexa or Siri never respond to one of our legitimate demands the way Hal terrifyingly does in this scene. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Number 21. Show me the money. Jerry Maguire. Oh, no, no, you can do better than that, Jerry. I want you to say it with you with me, brother. Both You Had Me at Hello and Show Me the Money instantly bring Jerry Maguire to the tip of everyone's tongue. However, we tend to agree with the American Film Institute, who placed the latter at number 25 on their 100 Years 100 Movie Quotes list, with the former coming in slightly lower at number 52. Show me the money. Maybe it's the backing music, the Cuba Gooding Jr. dance, the screaming Tom Cruise, the way it's repeated, or a mix of it all. But for some reason, whenever we hear this line, we just want to show ourselves Jerry Maguire again for the umpteenth time. Show me the money! Number 20. Why So Serious? The Dark Knight You want to know how I got these scars? My father was a drinker and a fiend. In the midst of his Gotham crime spree, the Joker terrified his rivals simply by explaining where his scars came from. In his first version of the story, he claims his face was carved up by his own father as part of a psychotic attempt to turn his frown upside down. Why so serious? He comes at me with the knife. Why so serious? He sticks the blade in my mouth. Let's put a smile on that face. The twisted humor of his dad's words are perfectly on brand for Joker, becoming more chilling the more he repeats it. Thanks to Heath Ledger's performance, Why So Serious elicited all the crazed violence of The Dark Knight. Why So Serious? Number 19. I Wish I Knew How to Quit You – Brokeback Mountain So what we got now is Brokeback Mountain! Jack Twist in Ennis Del Mar's country romance was full of hardship. With family lives and homophobic attitudes straining their relationship, Jack finally explodes at Ennis for keeping him at arm's length. Despite all his anger, Jack offers up this tortured, poetic line when he admits that he can't get over his feelings for Ennis. I wish I knew how to quit you. His gruff words capture the rancher personas that most people remember about Brokeback Mountain and perfectly express the frustration and agony of the moment. It's all right. <laughs> Damn you, Ennis. I just can't stand this anymore, Jack. Number 18. You talking to me? Taxi Driver. You talking to me? talking to me? New York can be a lonely city. And Travis Bickle is not only alone, he also has to witness the crime and indecency of the city streets at night as he works as a taxi driver. His frustration leads him to buy a gun as he prepares to take the law into his own hands. To practice, Bickle holds arguments in his mirror and practices drawing his weapon. 
resulting in a macho back and forth with himself. Then who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? The chat is frightening and unhinged, two of the things that Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro do best. You're dead. Number 17. Life is like a box of chocolates. Forrest Gump. Hello. My name's Forrest. Forrest Gump. Do you want a chocolate? Forrest Gump's mama teaches him a lot about life, and he preaches her words like proverbs. So when Forrest tries to offer a chocolate to a stranger, he also drops in this amazing analogy. My mom always said, life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. The line sums up the events of the movie, which is all about Forrest's different life experiences, and he reflects his interesting perspective on the uncertainties of life. While the film is full of wise lines, and quotes from Forrest's mama, this particular nugget stands out by reflecting its central character's optimism and insight. And that's all I have to say about that. Number 16. I dare you. I double dare you. Pulp Fiction. What country are you from? What? What? What ain't no country I ever heard of? They speak English and what? Tarantino's 1994 crime film is full of iconic moments and recognizable quotes. And great vengeance and furious anger was definitely on our radar, but we had to give this spot to Jules' other line when he's shaking down Brett for double-crossing their boss. The panicked Brett just can't stop saying what even with his life on the line. So Jules lays down a simple challenge. What? Say what again! Say what again! I dare you! I double dare you, motherfucker! Say what one more goddamn time! Unfortunately, Brett just can't help himself. Moral of the story? Don't piss off Samuel L. Jackson. Does he look like a bitch? What? <laughs> Number 15. I'm the king of the world. Titanic. With the wind flowing in their hair and a new life ahead of them, Jack and Fabrizio are ecstatic to be on board the Titanic, the ship that even God himself couldn't sink, supposedly. Jack is so over the moon that he throws his arms in the air and lets out this dramatic shout. I'm the king of the world! His enthusiasm matches the theatricality of the scene, drawing audiences into his moment of joy, and evokes a strong sense of hope that makes the film's conclusion all the more tragic. I will never let go, Jack. I'll never let go. Number 14. Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. The Princess Bride. Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. What's heroic revenge without a monologue? Fencing master Inigo Montoya has one of the best. He's vowed to kill his father's murderer, the vizier Count Rugen. Hello. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. At first, the furious passion behind his words doesn't seem to be enough to win the fight. He is stabbed over and over again and seems to be losing strength. That just makes it all the more satisfying to watch him repeat his catchphrase over and over as he gets back up and takes Rugen down. Hello! My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die! Number 13. You can't handle the truth. A few good men. You snotty little bastard. It's a line that's come to define courtroom drama. As two Marines face murder charges, Lieutenant Caffey boldly calls in Colonel Jessup to explain his role in events. As the exchange degenerates into shouting, Caffey demands answers instead of excuses. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Jessup's response is so blunt that it silences the room. The Colonel's rage also shows us just how twisted his sense of honor really is. Jack Nicholson's fierce performance keeps audiences coming back to this scene and makes the line iconic. You don't want the truth because deep down in places you don't talk about at parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. Number 12. Here's looking at you, kid. Casablanca. If that plane leaves the ground and you're not with him, you'll regret it. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. Goodbyes can be hard at the best of times, let alone in times of war. It's not any easier for American expat Rick Blaine when he tells Ilsa that she can't stay with him in Casablanca. As he sacrifices his own happiness, knowing that she'll be safer and happier taking the plane to Lisbon with her husband Victor Laszlo, he offers some sage advice. His farewell culminates in these iconic parting words, a callback to the duo's time in Paris together. 
Cool and noble, Rick's send-off is too smooth to argue with. He's looking at you, kid. Number 11, I See Dead People, The Sixth Sense. Cole is clearly troubled by something, but his psychologist Malcolm can't seem to get a clear answer. After the two establish some trust, however, the young boy opens up about his terrifying secret. I see dead people. The implications of his words are chilling, whether or not Malcolm believes them at the time. Cole's brief explanation imbues the film with a classic M. Night Shyamalan air of creepy mystery, while dropping in just enough foreshadowing to enrich repeat viewings. This is one scene that definitely takes on a new tone once you know the end. It doesn't hurt anymore. Number 10, You Shall Not Pass, The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. You cannot pass! Get out! Just as Frodo and the rest of the Fellowship are finally about to escape the mines of Moria, a Balrog arrives to cut their mission short. Despite a considerable size difference, Gandalf squares off with the fiery beast and beats it back. With all of his might, the great wizard stares down the Balrog and lets out one battle cry for the ages. You shall not pass! Ian McKellen is utterly involved in this dominating performance, and quite frankly, we would hate to be in the Balrog's shoes. Number nine, I love the smell of napalm in the morning, Apocalypse Now. You smell it? You smell it? Ah! Napalm, son! Nothing else in the world smells like that. Francis Ford Coppola's epic war film was based on Joseph Conrad's novella Heart of Darkness, but included more than a few classic original lines of dialogue. In one of the film's most famous scenes, Lieutenant Colonel Kilgore practically beams as he watches his troops drop napalm in Vietnam. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. His unusually chipper reaction to the oily stench is especially eerie because he throws it out there like it's a common turn of phrase. Actor Robert Duvall's callous delivery amid horrifying carnage perfectly captures the spirit of the movie. Smells like... Victory. Number eight, say hello to my little friend, Scarface. Okay. Do you wanna play with us? Okay. Drug overlord Tony Montana carried so much charm in his rise to power that he seemed to have a line for every situation. So it came as no surprise that as he was facing death from a rival kingpin's henchman, Montana was inspired to give the goons a piece of his mind. With lots of substances and heavy firepower to back him up, Tony managed to be badass and hilarious all at the same time. Say hello to my little friend! The deranged mix of humor and violence was central to Tony's character and showed that he wouldn't let something like gunfire get him down. Number seven, here's Johnny, The Shining. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains. Jack Nicholson's performance as Jack Torrance was all too believable, and this one line is a perfect example. Driven mad by supernatural forces in the Overlook Hotel, Jack turns on his family, chopping through a bathroom door to reach his terrified wife. His riff on the intro from The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson was both absurd and horrifying all at once. Here's Johnny! <laughs> Nicholson actually improvised the line, and the scene wouldn't have been the same without it. Taken from the climax, it's become emblematic of the movie. Number six, there's no place like home, The Wizard of Oz. When Dorothy is whisked off to the magical land of Oz, she realizes very quickly that she is far, far from home. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. While her quip about not being in Kansas is oft quoted, her magical mantra at the end of her journey holds a closer tie to the film, since uttering it is pivotal to the plot. Turns out she had the power to return home all along. She just didn't know it. There's no place The additional visuals of her ruby slippers and the magical power of her incantation help etch this saying into people's memories. There's no place like home. Number five, you're gonna need a bigger boat, Jaws. Come on down and chump some of this shit. With a massive shark terrorizing Amity Island, Police Chief Martin Brody, oceanographer Matt Hooper, and grizzled professional shark hunter Quint head out to kill it. While Brody is throwing bait into the water, however, the monstrous shark sneaks up on him instead. Realizing with shock how huge the shark really is, the chief slowly backs away, and once in the cabin, makes this deadpan observation to Quint. You're gonna need a bigger boat. It's a humorous moment in a tense situation, and filmmakers and fans alike quote it to this day.
Number four, I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. The Godfather. How do you do that? My father made him an offer he couldn't refuse. Few things are more ominous than a gangster being vague. On the day of his daughter's wedding, mafia patriarch Don Corleone listens to requests from family members and associates. When singer Johnny Fontaine comes whining about a movie role, the Don soothes him with an ambiguous promise. I want you to rest well in a month from now, this Hollywood big shot's gonna give you what you want. It's too late, they start shooting in a week. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Marlon Brando's confident and casual delivery shows just how powerful Corleone is long before you see his offer carried out. The menace lurking just behind Don's otherwise innocuous statement makes it one of the most memorable moments in mobster cinema. Number three, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Gone with the wind. I want to see if somewhere there isn't something left in life of charm and grace. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, I only know that I love you. That's your misfortune. Not all romances and happily ever after. Scarlett O'Hara and Rhett Butler's relationship is an emotional roller coaster. After seeing Scarlett embracing Ashley Wilkes, Rhett has had enough, and it's then that Scarlett realizes she does love Rhett after all. Viewers could have been forgiven for assuming that Rhett would hear her heartfelt appeal and change his mind. Instead, he shoots her down in a moment of brutal honesty, using language that was pretty risky for the times. You go, where shall I go, what shall I do? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Though the language has since become pedestrian, the impact of Rhett's rejection has remained timeless. Number two, I'll be back, The Terminator. I'll be back. Sure, out of context, it's banal, but when a line's context involves a murderous time-traveling robot, well, it changes a lot. Arnold Schwarzenegger's monotone performance lends a sinister edge to the line, especially since only the audience knows what he's capable of. Even next to some of The Terminator's more colorful one-liners, the comedy and tension here stick with you. I'll be back instantly evokes Schwarzenegger and the Terminator franchise, and the line has become a staple of pop culture parodies. Wait, where are you going? I'll be back. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, no, I am your father. Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. Luke's quest to defeat the Galactic Empire puts him head to head with the evil Darth Vader. But right as Luke denounces Vader for killing his dad, the villain reveals an even darker truth. He told me you killed him. No, I am your father. Given how shocking this twist is in the story, Luke's devastated reaction mirrored the audience's. While May the Force Be With You appears in the series more, the emotional force behind this line is much stronger. The fact that it's misquoted endlessly as Luke, I am your father, only shows how closely it's attached to the franchise. That's impossible! Search your feelings, you know it to be true. No! No! What quote and movie are most connected in your personal cinematic world? Let us know in the comments. I admire your luck. Mr. Bond. James Bond. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.